Good evening. We have with us tonight Dr. Stephen Price, Professor of Human Biology at Stanford University. Dr. Price is going to be discussing his latest work, Where Do Babies Come From? A work which challenges many of the accepted ideas about the process of baby making, and which has already caused quite a stir in the scientific community. Dr. Price, thank you for coming on the program. Well, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Now, Doctor, in your work, you raise some serious doubts about the stork theory of reproduction. Can you first explain the stork theory for some of our intellectually bankrupt viewers, and then tell us a little about what led you to doubt this theory, which is so widely accepted by scientists? Mm. Uh, well, the standard view of reproduction, which is still held by many scientists, is that babies come from storks who drop them out of the sky. Right, right. The storks drop the babies out of the sky during the middle of the night, and they land on the doorsteps of their parents' homes. Where exactly do you see a gap in that logic? Well, I started having my first doubts about the stork theory when I went on leave to uh, the Caribbean, and I noticed that while there weren't any storks, there were still babies. Excuse me, but I don't quite see how this is relevant to the discussion. Would you care to elaborate? Well, how could babies be living in the Caribbean without any storks to deliver them? Well, I mean, couldn't storks from nearby areas uh, take the babies to the Caribbean? Possibly, but even the closest stork would have to travel hundreds of miles over the ocean. I, I don't see how they could make that journey with, with, a, with a newborn. Well, well, maybe storks aren't the only birds that carry babies. Maybe birds that are indigenous to the Caribbean deliver them. I thought about that, but, but then I realized that the jabiru, the, the largest species of stork, weighs only 17 and a half pounds. How could a bird of that size carry a newborn any distance when newborns weigh on average seven and a half pounds? But you've never actually seen a stork carrying a baby, have you? No, I very much doubt anyone has. Well, if you've never seen a stork carrying a baby, how can you be so certain it can't be done? You mean, because I've never actually seen the phenomena happen makes me unqualified to say whether or not it has happened? Precisely. Right. Well, I don't know how to argue with that ironclad logic. But regardless, if, if, how, how could a baby survive being dropped from hundreds of feet in the air? We, we've tried countless experiments <coughs> using uh, newborns, dropping them from helicopters, from planes, from skyscrapers, and thus far, only five have ever survived. Two of them lost limbs, and the other three look forward to careers at goodwill. The statutory evidence for your case simply isn't there. Really, Doctor? I'm a little surprised, frankly. I would have thought someone as bright and intelligent as you would be able to keep up with the latest developments in his own field. That problem was addressed years ago in the movie Dumbo. The sacks have parachutes attached to them, which are automatically released as soon as the infants are dropped. Where do the storks get the parachutes? Well, they obviously managed to find them somewhere. I mean. Otherwise, there'd be a lot of dead infants lying around, wouldn't there? Look, look, instead of trying to patch up all the holes in the stork theory, perhaps we could look for a new theory. Uh, all right, all right. I, I'm willing to suppose, for, for the sake of argument, that there are some holes with, with the stork theory. But if infants don't come from the sacks of storks, where in God's green earth could they possibly come from, Doctor? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, through years of intensive study, I've discovered that babies are reproduced uh, through elements within the father and the mother. What exactly do you mean? Well, there are certain structures in the father that, upon union with structures in the mother, form a baby. <laughs> Just, you, you, go on, go on. Um, well, see, the structures enter the mother through the father. Uh, it looks like 
Um, we're being signaled for commercial break. No, no just, just keep explaining to me during the commercial. Well, uh, oh, okay. Buy this. Buy this. Buy this. And that's how it's done. But, but, but that's for Tinky Winkies! Um, yes it is. And other things. As you've learned today. Gracie needs a home. Wampum needs a home. This hat needs a head. So, so buy it. Let it out. I did the same thing. <laughs> this chair needs a butt. So buy it. This prosthetic hand needs a hand. And it sure is handy. This pillow is... Just buy it. Uh, okay, okay that, 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 that wraps up our program today, folks. Uh, I hope we all had a good time and learned a lot.